I'm going to talk about paper first. So this is, um, this it, oh, wait a minute. I need to share my screen. So this is the Altenew paper that I recommended for today's class. It is probably hot pressed paper because it's very smooth. This is Altenew's um, 100% cotton, and this is cold press. Do you see how it's got a whole lot more texture in it than this one? This is um, Tim Holtz watercolor paper. Now this has this much texture on one side and the back of it or the front of it is, is smoother. Um, let's see, this is Arches hot press paper. And this is Arches, if I can open this up, cold press paper. Okay. So uh, the reason I'm pointing this out is I prefer, and there's, you know, there's no right or wrong paper to use. I prefer the cold press paper because I want a smoother finish for when I'm drawing delicate flowers. Plenty of artists use the hot press paper, or excuse me, the cold press paper. There isn't, you know, one isn't better than the other. It has to do with your particular um, style and what you like. So that's what that's kind of the paper. Um, you want to make sure that your brush is a, a, a watercolor brush because it depends. The, the brush bristles will hold more water if it's a, a watercolor brush or as opposed to a um, oil brush or acrylic. So that makes a difference. And then for today, and I'm just getting this wet, you want one that can hold a nice point because we're going to be getting into little details. Um, and this is um, a black velvet and the size is six. And I'm off the screen here, black velvet and the size is six. I have the Alta New brushes, but this is the brush I've been using for a long time now and I'm comfortable with it. So I'm just what I'm going to use. And I wanted to, so let me get this out of the way. We've talked about that. And I want to talk about the different kinds of um, watercolor style. So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to share my desktop with you. All right. So this is one, we'll say style of watercolor. There are many styles. This is very loose, very quick, not a lot of detail. I probably could do this. I am not a watercolorist. Here's another style. It looks very realistic. This takes a lot of time, a lot of practice. I am not at this stage, nor will I probably ever be. But there's a whole range of different styles in between. And I, oops, I want to show you um, if I can get, let me get rid of preview. And if I can go here, I want this one. So if you know Alta New at all, you probably have heard of um, JC. JC is a wonderful artist. I love his work. And um, this is more what I aspire to. It doesn't look realistic, but it doesn't look um, abstract either. He has a lovely class on the Alta New site. But one of the things I want to point out here, <laughs> we're going to look at is where there's little dips in the edges of the flowers, he's put these um, uh, darker color to make it look like it's wrinkled, like here and here and here to give it some depth so it doesn't just look flat. He puts a lot of lines. I'm not at that <laughs> I'm not that good yet. So he even does it. This happens to be with um, the artist markers, but he does the same st style. 
So there's a little dip on the edge of the flower here, and he's made it darker there. And same with here and here. And that's what we're going to do for the second card. So I just want to say, I just want to point out that there are many, many um, different techniques to use in watercolor. And I'm hoping that this class, you'll um, find something that is fun to do. Oops, hello, stop share. Okay, fun to do and easy and, you know, so you don't have to think that you have to have a lot of talent. Another card, I'm going to show you a couple cards I've done. If I knock everything on the floor. This is also watercolor. This is also watercolor. I just wet the paper, blop colors on it, added some metallic watercolor and made a galaxy background. I did this and this you can see here in certain spots. You can see where I've darkened it right there. I'm trying to get this close enough so you can see. Um, I've darkened it here. So you can kind of see right here. Um, I've made it darker here along the edge because the leaf is folded over. So it's going to be look darker because it's in shadow under there because the leaf is folded over causing a shadow. Anybody have any questions? And some of you may already or all of you may already know this stuff, but anybody have any questions so far on, on that? Good. All right. Now, when you use watercolor, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And it's Sandy's job. It's, it's my job first, but it's Sandy's job to make sure that I'm not off here trying to show you something and that I stay on the screen. All right. So one thing that's fun about watercolor is that the, the um, colors flow together when you're on a wet surface. So you might have heard um, there's wet on wet or wet on dry. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint a square with clean, clear water. So I've got my water sitting over here. And I'm going to paint this and I'm going to try to show you there. You can see how wet it is. And if I take some watercolor, so I'm just going to grab a color here. And I drop it on there. You see that it spreads. Whereas if I take this watercolor and I drop it on a dry spot, no spreading. So the first card we're making today, which is going to be this one, we're going to use a lot of this spreading around. So I'm, I've got this whole area that's wet. I've added some blue to that. Now I'm going to add some purple to that and just let that mix. And I think that's one reason why I like the um, watercolors is because I love to let it mix and watch it and let it the watercolor color do its job and I just enjoy it. So I'm hoping that that's going to be good enough for you guys in order to enjoy using watercolor and just let the colors mix together and create something fun and I'm using my favorite colors, pink and purple. And uh, if you look at my hair or what I'm wearing, that you might guess that that's my favorite color. All right. Any questions on that? Wet on wet and wet on dry. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to stamp. We're going to stamp our image and then we're going to heat emboss it. When you heat emboss it, and we're using black, but I've also done it where you've used, um, I've used clear or white or a, a gold, and that's pretty too. But where it's been embossed, the embossing gives a little raised image so that when you paint with the water, it stays contained in that outline. So you don't have to worry about staying in the lines quite as much. And I'm not good at staying in the line. So I find this to be very helpful. So 
using whatever stamping devices that you have, I want you to go ahead and we're going to, it's back here. I'm going to get out um, and we're going to stamp this one first. I've already stamped it ahead of time. And, um, and we might as well stamp both of them at the same time because we're going to heat emboss it. Might as well get that all done. So what you're going to do is you're going to lay your um, paper down. Um, Mele wants to know, what should I do if my ink pad is too dry to get an image? Your, um, your black, was it the black one? Unmute yourself so you can answer my question. Is it the black ink that's not giving a, a good image? She says yes. Yes. So are you using a pigment ink? For this, you would want to use a black pigment ink. If you're using a, a, a dye ink, you need to stamp it multiple times. If it's not giving a good image because it's not, because um, um, Melissa was having this problem at the very beginning, because it, um, it's not meeting the paper well, you might want to put something behind so that it's thicker and it brings the paper up closer to she your says she, she says she lives in Colorado and it's really dry. And she's using archival black ink. Archival. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Um, you, you may need to um, purchase a re-inker. What about a gray color? Could she use that instead or a brown to substitute in? That's juicier. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know, I, I, um, it needs to be dark or... You could do, you could use just um, uh, the um, Versamark or the embossing. That, that's ink. what I was thinking is just use embossing ink and emboss it with that. And then it will have a clear outline or use, um, I would not suggest using black embossing powder because no matter how much you use your anti-static and you want to make sure you put the anti-static powder on your paper. No matter how much of that you use, <laughs> little pieces of that um, black embossing powder gets all over. I have never been happy with it. So if you have a method that you can, but you could use white or clear and it will have a different look. I wish I had one to show you that I've done in the past. Um, Barbara says she used brown pigment ink. Brown pigment? Okay. It would look similar to this. This is white embossing. This isn't watercolor, but you'd have that look around your flowers instead of black. And, and you know, I've done that too. Does that, does that give you enough information to continue? Is that okay? Or put something underneath it. She um, says she's going to try that and says, thank you. Sure. You're very welcome. Um, so, and then you're going to take your, you're going to take your um, big flower. And I purposely decided to do both flowers using the same, um, the same stamp set so we didn't have to buy different stamp sets trying to save money and arrange them on arrange it on your um background how you want it i think mine is arranged like that be sure that you use your anti-static really good before if you don't have the um uh, a pigment black and you have a dye black or something else, stamp it with a black until it gets as dark as you'd like it to be. Clean your stamp off really good and then stamp it again with Versamark and then do, um, then do the clear embossing. 
So, and I've done that, you know, I've had to do that before. I stamp with a, I want it to be a particular color. So I stamp with, with, you know, a dye ink blue or green or whatever I want, but I want it to be in, you know, clear embossed or embossed. So I just stamp with the color I want. Then I stamp with the clear and then use the clear um, embossing powder. I am going to go ahead um, and stamp this one because I've already done this, but I'd like you to stamp both of them and then go ahead and uh, heat emboss it. I want to do it exactly the same. Let me get this like that. There, it's like that. Close enough. Nope, that's not going to work. I'm going to hit my thing here. I'm just taping it down because I want to make sure that it doesn't move. And because I'm not doing the whole thing, I want to measure or look to see so where I need to put the ink on. And I made myself this little chunky thing out of a Yankee candle top. And then just got this, um, this stuff on the bottom is what you would put on the bottom of furniture. If you want it to be able to slide safely on hardwood floors, I just glued that in there. And then before I did that, I just added some glitter to the inside of this. Now I find this isn't dark enough for me. So I'm gonna go back and add some more there to that big flower in the middle. Down at the edges there. And because I usually stamp twice, that's why I put that down. I just wanna make sure it doesn't move at all. And then I'm going to get out my clear embossing powder. Oh, I don't need that. And I suggest that you heat up your embossing um, gun ahead of time. Or you're really zoomed in again. You might want to just back up again a few inches. Say that again. You might want to just back up a few inches with your camera again. It's really zoomed in. There, better. Better. I'm going to have... A, a rag or paper towel because I'm constantly drying off my brush. He's out of the way. And I'll try to sh make sure that you know when I'm when I'm painting. I'm going to um, zoom this in so you can see better. But um, hopefully, you can see when I dry my brush off so you know my water is right here. Kind of 
try and move everything closer that you can see it. And if you have a, a, a mister, you could mist, uh, wetten the colors that we're going to use. I have made a swatch sheet for my, it's a little dirty, but for my colors. So I have taken every single color here, painted it on here so that I can see what it looks like. And I've gone from light or dark to light. Um, and I'm going to be using these and these to make that first card. Now I've moved everything out of the way and I don't know where I put the card. Oh, there it is. So that's helpful. Um, and we're going to, this is the card we're going to be making. And then I used, um, orange cream for the center and bamboo evergreen and mountain mist. I don't know that I even use that many. This thing here is my palette. So I'm going to mist this. I'm going to mist these colors here. Make them nice and wet. So I might want to do some mixing of colors on this. So I get my my brush wet and it's dripping wet now. So I, I tap it off a little bit. I don't want it that. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this and I could put it over here and say, OK, I want to add a little blue to that. I rinse my brush, tap off, grab a little bit of the blue, and then I can mix it there like that if I want. I'm going to zoom in here now and hopefully this won't fall on me. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, ah, I got my paper wet on the back. We're going to, with a clean brush, we're going to paint with water. I'm going to just start with this one in the middle because it's easy to see. And I'm going to put clean water on a leaf. And you can see, wait a minute, there we go. You can see how much water is there. And we could do all, all the petals. And someone has so graciously let me know that I spelt in my handout petals on a bicycle instead of petals, <laughs> petals on a flower. So I do know the difference, but there are times when I wish I had an editor. All right, you get an idea. This one right here has a little, wait a minute, let me get there. This one right here has a little too much water on it right there. But the other ones are looking pretty good. So I'm just not going to start with that petal because the, the water will seep in and, and um, eva evaporate. Then I'm going to start with a color. And I don't care whether you start with it. And you don't have to do blues and purples. You could do... Oranges and yellows, if you prefer. Or you could do blues and greens, if you prefer. But for this, we're going to use, I'm going to use um, the, the blues and purple. So I'm going to start with a little bit of, of purple. Now, that's a lot of ink on that. So I'm going to put some here because I don't want it that dark. And then I can rinse my brush. And then add a little water here. Because the more water I add, the lighter, the lighter it gets. So I'm just going to put some of that right there and let it kind of float around. And to make the flower more interesting, I'm going to add some blue. And I'm going to let the, the water just kind of flow around. 
So I'm just going to get a very tiny little tip of blue on my brush, very tiny, and just kind of tap it in there and let it flow. Can you, am I close enough, uh, Sandy? Yes, I wouldn't get any closer because you'll be too right. close. So it's about right right now, but you might want to move your paper towards your paint a little, you know, like that oh, way. Yeah, okay. there. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I want. All right. Good. I do, I do not want to um, teach a whole class and have you not be able to see what I'm doing. So, yeah, if... And again, if you guys have any questions, I'm going too fast, you want me to slow down or repeat something, I'm happy to do that. Just put it in the chat. And uh, Sandy will. Now you can see how that just kind of floats around. Maybe I didn't want it that dark. I'm just going to take, I'm cleaning my brush, I'm wiping it off, and I'm just going to kind of move it around. And see how I can kind of lift up the color there. So I can rinse, tap, and kind of lift up the color. Some people say watercolor is the hardest medium to paint with. Some people say it's the easiest. And I guess it depends on your style. If you're trying to do that, that absolutely realistic, like a photograph look, it might be harder, but for this, oh gee, I got too much blue. Just dab some of it off. I'm going to try the other blue. I think I'm going to like the other blue better, which is for, uh, Persian blue. Lori, I think some of it also has to do with how much of a perfectionist you are. You know, yes. watercolor, you can't be, well, unless you're, you know, complete genius watercolor person, you know, it is what it is and it just flows and it does its own thing. And if you're into being perfectionism, then it, it's going to be more difficult for you to let that happen. Right. Yes. If you're trying to recreate that flower with that look, that would be hard. But if you just want to create the, use this technique, you know, and I just keep adding more blue or more purple depending on how I want it to look. I've added several different colors here now. And I think for me, that's that's fine. And I'm just gonna go on to the next flower. Maybe the next flower, I'll do more blue. Whoops, I got some water right there. I'm just gonna dab that off because I don't want it to, I don't want the paint to go there. And because I wanna let that dry, I'm just gonna come over here to another flower away from that and do the same thing. I start by painting the clean, clear water, going up to the edges. And for me and for this style, I'm not a perfectionist. I just want to play with the colors and enjoy the process. I have to keep looking sideways to make sure that I've got the whole... Um, the whole petal wet, and I missed a spot right there. And then I'm gonna do this one more blue, so I'm gonna get just a very tiny dab of it on my, on my brush, and then just let it kind of flow in there. I like that color blue better. My only concern is that I stay in the lines. And I've seen Aram from Altenew do wonderful work where she doesn't even stay in the lines. Just letting it flow. Now I want maybe some purple in there. So this purple that I've got over here, I'll just dab a little bit of that in. Let it go. And at that point, I might just let it do its thing and see what it's going to turn out. And I'm going to go on to another flower. So 
unlike the detailed, these go, this technique goes rather quickly. And you're not spending, you know, four hours on one card. Now I've let this spread out a little bit and I'm not liking it. Sandy, what do you think? Do you like that look? Um, I like the first one better. I like the first one better. So I'm just going to. But having said that, it's so such a personal choice. And again, me being the big perfectionist, if that were me, I'd be saying, oh, you know, I have to do it perfect. But that's the wrong attitude with watercolor. And the other thing is, is you don't want them all looking the same because no two flowers are the same in reality either. If you go look in a garden and all the flowers and you look at them individually, no two are exactly alike. So it's okay to have it not be all exactly uniform, you know? I think I'm going to come try this color now, dusk. So I've done desert night and I've done Persian blue. And I'm going to try a little bit of dusk on this one. Maybe I'll get it different. Oh, now that one's drying a little bit. So I want to add some more water. And I don't want any of my flowers to be particularly dark, but they could be. Maybe that's maybe that's what you like. You want them to be dark. Um, my goal for this one was to have it kind of pale. My husband always wants me to make them, you know, my my cards darker so and i'm just taking just an ever just just the tip of my brush on to that and i'm just kind of moving it around and it's kind of sitting because it's starting to dry a little bit so i'm going to get more water wipe off my brush and then just kind of spread a little bit and notice i'm kind of doing little circles here I'm rinsing my brush again because I want to get some of that water or that paint up and moving. Yeah. I don't even know what kind of flowers these are. So I don't know what this what color they're supposed to be in, in nature. Anybody anybody out there have any idea what what kind of flowers these are supposed to be? There. I happen to like that one now. So I'm just going to go on to the next flower. This, this has dried now, so I can work on this flower here next to it. Otherwise, if it wasn't dried, I don't want to risk having this color, you know, bleed over to here or this color bleed over to there. So that's why I do it, you know, not next to each other. And Sandy, can we find out how many people are painting along with me and how many people are just watching? And either way is fine. Great. Just go ahead and put in the chat whether you're watching or painting, and then I'll let Lori know. So this one is now wet. And I think I'm going to make this one purple. Let's try this purple instead. And I love to watch it as it's, you know, kind of creeps out. And I've seen lovely... Um, Lovely cards done where where they've used a lot of this method where you just let it creep out and you know not even blend it let the let it all do blending itself. Let's see what. Or the majority are painting along with you. Wonderful. And if you don't want to, I know my very best friend likes to watch everything first before she starts. I taught her Zen Tangle a while back. Um, and when she watches anything, rather than following along, she wants to watch the whole thing first. Now, I think I got this too dark. I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. Same with this one. 
And often what I'll do, I'll keep making these light and then I go back later and I'll say, oh, that's not dark enough and just add more color. Lori, for some reason, my chat decided to freeze up and then it started up again. So I missed a couple of comments earlier. I don't know why it did that. But anyway, um, you need to know, Barbara says that, you know, she signed up late, so she's using a different stamp, but um, your coupon code had expired. So you're, you're going to need to check with Altenew and find out what's up with that. Oh, yeah. The, well, yeah, the, it had expired long before um, class, and that's the way they do it. They give like two weeks for that or whatever it is from the time that they announce it. Um, can I have no control over that? So I know Barbara and one other person signed up, I think, yesterday. And yes, that coupon code would have expired by then. And I apologize, but. That's that's how Alta knew, and I, I have no that's, control over that. Yeah, they we don't have any control over that when we do things with Alta knew. They and they require us to to um, submit everything six weeks ahead. So at least yes, you know, and so a lot a lot changes in those six weeks, but. Um, we, as educators, we don't have any say so over any of that or control over it. Yeah. So Barbara says no problem. She had another altitude flower stamp anyway, yeah. but, um, anyway, yeah, it, there's just, there's kind of a, a gap there. And sometimes there's problems with when we say that we want to use a particular stamp, we have to, we have to, um, they have to make sure that there's enough of those in stock. But the funny thing is, is that the, then they don't hold them in stock. So if they hold, if they check and, oh, there's 20 of them in stock, that's fine. But then when, by the time the yeah, class Six weeks starts, later when the class starts, yeah. Yeah, then they might have sold out of those. And they don't hold them for your class. So, um, you know, these are just things that are all to new things. and And educators don't have the anything to do with it so it is right. what it is yeah they advertise our classes for us and you know everything else is up to them we decide what class we want to teach but and if you i didn't mention it but be sure that you don't get the centers wet Otherwise, you're blue. And I see I did on this one. I can get that closer. This one, I got it a little bit wet. And some of the blue has slipped into that. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm still going to put the yellow in. But try not to get your centers wet. And this one here has kind of a, a, a harsh line. God, I can't do this. A harsh line right here. I don't like that. Some people do. I'm just going to take my brush and do that and get rid of that harsh line. I think I need some more purple flowers. I'm going to make this. And these are long here are the um, are the are the leaves just so you know here. I had a hard time deciding what part was green and what part was, you know, what was leaves and what was petals. I make these things here green. So this, this here. And I'm sure I've colored some leaves purple and probably some petals green, but I, I don't notice it. So I'm not worried about it. The other thing about um, the paper, um, cold press paper, that's the one that's 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 um, uh, more textured, takes um, 
less water and it flows more. And let's see, what was the other thing? Whereas the, 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 the hot press, and the reason it's called that is after they've made the paper, the hot press, they run it through rollers and the rollers are hot. Kind of like a steamroller, like you would on a on a street, you know, um, which flattens out and it makes the um, the fibers more dense. So it takes um, longer for it to dry, I believe, too. Oh, and I I went out of the line there, so I'm just gonna take my and dab that up because I don't want my color to go out of the line. And I'm constantly turning my head sideways or turning the paper so I can see how wet it is. For example, I don't want my petal to be, let me give you an example of what I don't want, that wet, that it's dripping. So I would just take my brush and take some of that water out of there. And so it's like that, not quite so. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to um, have it so wet that when I tip the paper, it'll start running down the page. Although the um, embossing powder helps contain that, I don't want it that wet anyway. And Lori, I forget you like cold or hot pressed paper better. I like the hot press, the smoother paper. It'd be good like if you do your questions in the chat because it it's better for the audio if if only Lori's mic is on. Thanks. Lori, you might want to move further more towards uh, away from you, more towards your paint again, just a little bit more. Yeah, like the, oh, up this way. No. Nope. Tore away from you. That, the other way. This way? Yeah, that okay. way. All right. There we go. A little bit more there. That's great. Thank you. Now, someone, just for differences, someone may choose to... Um, make the the ones that are kind of like buds, not fully open like this one, make those purple or blue and, and make the other ones more colorful. It certainly doesn't matter, but I've seen flowers where they're kind of one color when they're closed up and a different color when they're open. I'm just giving you ideas of how you can paint your flowers. No right or wrong way. This particular one, I'm choosing to make it darker at the base. So I'm putting more ink down, ink, more paint down here at the base. I just rinse my, my um, brush, dry it off and then just kind of encourage it with my brush to come up a little bit. I kind of like that one. Maybe I'll do this one more blue. That's kind of nice with... Um, when you get to paint your own, um, you can choose what color you use. As I said, I don't know, for all I know, these are a, a variety of daisies. They don't look like them to be, but they might be. Oh, maybe this variety of flowers only comes in oranges and yellows. And there are very few blue flowers. Irises can come in blue.
my problem with when I paint flowers is I think all flowers should be pink. <laughs> Which I know they're not. It's kind of like when I was a kid, I thought all, all cats were girls and all dogs were boys. All flowers should be pink. I mean, have you seen a bulldog? There's nothing feminine about that. <laughs> Do we have any pet owners out there? Is Sandy can attest it's very hard teaching when you can't. It's interact. extremely hard when you oh. just have this void and you can't see anybody and you can't. Yeah. Um, and when we have you, everybody have their mics off, which we hate to do, but it's just really important for the video, for yeah. the recording. So it's difficult to teach in that environment. Yeah. Lori, I've been looking, and I think these could be anemone, anemones, if I could say it correctly. I will attempt to put a picture in the chat if I can. Um, we'll see. All right. I am just going to kind of move along with this. In a little bit, I'm going to switch to the other card um, because I'm just doing the same thing over and over on each petal here. I'm not really teaching anything new. And I want to make sure that we have a chance to um, look at how to make um, some depth and shading. Oh, I don't like that purple. Oh darn. It's it's um it's grayer than I was wanting. But I'm just going to continue adding it. I'm taking my brush, rinsing it off, and just kind of pulling the, the color off the, the petal. And I'm going to switch over to this purple that I like better. If you're watching this little spot right, let me see where my, right here, let me bring it up, is really behind the flowers. And I've been, same with this one, I've been known to just paint over it, not realizing it's really supposed to be behind the flower. So, you know, if you do, so what? But just so you know, like there's a gap right there. There's a one right there. There's a tiny one right there. I think these, I think that, I don't know if that's a gap or not. That one is. But I can guarantee you nobody is going to pick up your card, your beautiful card, and say, oh, look, they painted right over that gap. It's a little problematic to be able for you to see what I'm painting, what colors I'm choosing, and when I dip my, you can't even see my water. Oh, it's such a lovely lilac. If you were going to be painting with more colors than what we're using today, I suggest two, um, two containers of water. One's for like blues and greens, one for oranges and reds. Because otherwise you may end up contaminating colors 
or not getting as true a color as you wanted or um, going to change, going to the uh, sink and changing out your water more often. Now, right now, I'm this leaf is under this one. So I'm putting a little more paint along there to give it kind of like looking like a shadow. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we work on our next card. And I like the fact that if I put too much color down, I can just take a clean brush and pull some of that color off. And I got a little piece of lint there. I think I like the, the flowers. I like the flowers best when I see multiple colors in the flowers. That's my personal preference. So I'm well, really- Well, we posted a, a purple anemone in the chat. Oh, wonderful. And that's my best guess. Maybe not perfect, but I think that's the kind of flower it's supposed to be, which do come in purple. Oh, well, see, that's, I only paint purple and pink flowers because. <laughs> I know, and it's perfect for you. It is. I try so hard. That's why the other one is in, is, is in yellows, because I get myself in a rut. Oh, no, it's another pink flower. Can you see the chat? I'm not sure if you can on your screen, but. I cannot see the chat. Yeah. But you I can, can because we're recording this, and it is recording, yep. Because we're recording it, I can go back and look at the chat and read everyone's comment. Which is really very nice. Can I get a reading on how people are doing? Are, are, are they liking this? And it's okay if you don't. Is it something that's being worthwhile or or... You know, are you learning anything new? Am I giving any tips that maybe is new to you? Sandy knows what I'm doing. I'm trying to get some feedback. <laughs> I know. And <laughs> Tanya says she's learning a lot. Good. Shoot, where is that flower I just painted? I just painted one and I can't find out what it was. It wasn't obviously not wet enough. Barbara says she likes watching you paint while talking and you can answer questions and she can try. Okay. Yeah, I have, um, <laughs> I don't know which flower I just painted. I do like watching people paint. I, I go to, you. I have several watercolor artists that I follow on YouTube and I just sit there and watch them paint. Sometimes I try myself. Everybody says that they're learning. Good. It's it's really difficult, isn't it, Lori, to to kind of adapt to talking and teaching while doing and demonstrating. Yeah. Right. I mean I feel like I'm talking to myself. Shoot the wrong color. You know. Nobody's with nobody's in the room with me. So I'm just talking away to myself. And then I realize, oh, this is being recorded. Careful what you say. Annette says, I'm loving learning watercolor technique with you. I've been watching many mixed media artists, but I love your class. Thank you. Oh, and I can see right here on this particular flower, this is supposed to be not colored in and I colored it in. That one's not, but that one I colored in. Oh, darn. So what? That's art. That is right? art. Yeah. That's art. Joanne says, I was always afraid of water painting. It's too frustrating, but I'm very happy with my results. Good. Good. And I've heard that. Oh, watercolor is too hard. Well, it depends on what you're trying to make. You know, if you're trying to make a flower that looks like it was a photograph, I would find that frustrating too. But I love to watch the 
the colors bleed together. Oh, I'm really liking this particular flower I got with the blue and the purple. So it's, it's, to me, it's fun. To me, it's fun. And, um, where's that one go? I don't know what I've done with it yet. Lori, we're at uh, six minutes, seven minutes after the hour. So I'm not sure when you were planning to change cards, but just a time. I probably should change now. Is everybody okay with that? And if we have time, see the, the second flower, the second one I did less because I thought, okay, this could take a while. I mean, it goes quickly, but, but then I go back and play with this one and then I play with this one. So if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to switch to this card. Yeah, people are fine with switching. And Hannah says, you're doing great. This is very difficult as a teacher and you're doing great. I appreciate your honesty in particular. We all do the best we can. We all do the best we can. All right. So this one I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use. I got to get this down here so you can see it. Um, these colors in here. This has a little more uh, pinkish reddish in here rather than orange. It's got a little bit. But we're going to concentrate on making these little lines here these little let me get this out so i don't so the leaf dips down here so that's where we're going to put the dark the leaf dips down here and we're going to put the dark there and then for example this leaf is leaf petal this petal is on top of this petal so it's shattering shadowing right here this leaf is a uh, petal is on top of this petal so it's darker here and I only did for this card that flower and everything else I did like the previous card. But um, this one, I did almost all the flowers with that. Now, like I look at this one here and that's kind of going this way and that's going that way. I don't like the way I don't think that looks natural, but I don't know how to fix it. So I just left it like that. Notice that, let's take a look at this one. It's a sharp edge here, but it, it, it blends out on this side. Is that, is that showing up, Sandy, what I'm saying? So this one in particular, it's a yes. sharp edge here between the dark and the light. But on yes. this side of sure. that, it, it kind of, you know, fades out. So we want to try to get that so it doesn't look too sharp. Well, I like that one the best. But um, like this one here, I've got two colors making it there. And it's, shoot, I have, <laughs> okay, there's actually lead in this and it's drawing on my, let's get the lead out. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a really good example right there with the three. Um, well, now I can't see it, but right. Yeah. To the right, that same flower, the next petal over, there's three little lines that show up really well up no, on the opposite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, there's three little lines in the kind of mauveish lavender color flower to your right. This one. Nope. To the right. This one. One more, one more over. This one. There. There's three little lines that show up very well to the right, but still. Anyway, I'm sure everybody can see them without me trying to direct you, but those mm -hmm. lines show up well on camera and and uh and illustrate what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's get started. So I'm gonna take my little spray bottle, and you don't need to spray, you could just take. And I'm not going to switch colors. I mean, I've got plenty of purple in here. I did not bring up another. Um, I could use my tea, but I won't. Um, another glass for, for water. So I'm just going to use the same water. Um, but we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet these colors down. And if, 
And I have to be careful when I'm spraying on this because the last time I did that, it, it splattered on my paper. So I'm just doing that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start by putting, and we'll just do this big one in the middle or whatever big one you've got there. And I'm just going to put the clean, clear water here first. And I've got too much water on that. I don't know if I can show you that, but there's a little too much on there. So I'm just going to take, I damped my, I tapped my, um, brush off and then I just tap in there and kind of get some of that water up. Then I'm going to go with maybe this hmm, maybe this what is this? This is fresh lemon might be too yellow and I'll put a little bit of that in there. And I'm rinsing my brush and then just kind of bringing that out and lighten it up a little bit. And I'm putting it heavier here because I want it to be darker at the base. I'm going to add a little bit of this coral berry. And I'm just getting just a tiniest bit on the tip of my brush. I don't think you can see how much is now you can. And I'm just doing the same thing, tapping it in there. because I didn't want this to be quite that yellow. And bring that up. And I'm using what's referred to as the belly of the brush. That's this part right here. So when I got ink, um, paint on my brush, I only got it on the tip. So I've got the tip in where I want it to be dark. And then I'm using the belly of the brush where it's still wet and kind of bringing it out like this. And maybe I'll put a little bit of this in. I'm not getting the color I want, but it doesn't really matter. Who cares? These anemones, oh, too dark, way too dark. Rinse the brush. Dab some of that off. Rinse. Dab. And you can even take, I've got a, a clean, oops, I've got a clean cloth here that I haven't used at all. And I'm just going to dab. And that just takes it right up. I mean, not everything. You won't be able to get everything up if you do that. Lori, Barbara asked, if we put a little too much water, will the paper just soak it up? Eventually. And talk about, again, the kind of brushes that are the best to use. So the water, you want to make sure that it's designed for watercolor. Um, I don't think this particular one is... Um, is natural fiber. I think this is synthetic. Um, I did put a link to this brush um, in the handout. And because we're, we want, what we don't want, um, we don't want a brush that, for what we're doing here. I mean, this is also a watercolor brush. We don't want a brush that's got that type kind of tip to try to get in there because it won't go. It's too fat. Even if I get it wet, it's not going to hold a, a, a sharp point like this one. So, um, and I've got different size brushes. Here's another one. But you want to make sure that it, it has a nice sharp point if you want to get into little places. Um, I've also got, I can find it here, the tiny brush. This is, uh, is, I don't know what it is. This is a six. This says two over zero, so I'm not sure. But that's got, you know, really much smaller. But it's got that point that, you, that I want. I mean, there's all sorts of watercolor brushes. This is... This is also a watercolor brush, and that has does particular um, techniques of which I haven't mastered yet. So, so I'm not even going to try. So, yeah, this is a watercolor brush too, but it's very big. 
I might use this for washes if I want to paint something, you know, a lot of water on something. And I always make sure that my brushes are clean. I store my brushes upright and I don't want to get them bent. I don't want them stored. Like when I put this on, I make sure that all the bristles are in there, that I don't have some stick. Oops, I can't see some sticking out like that. I might even wet the brush before I put that on because I don't want to damage the bristles by making them, you know, one of them come bending out and, and getting all bent. Okay, I've said that several times now. But um, uh, a watercolors artist that I follow on YouTube recommended this. She does wonderful work, in my opinion. And I have used, I bought two of them. Um, I have another one in there someplace. Oh, there it is. So that's what it looks like dry. Kind of. Lori, can you put the names of those into the email that you're going to be sending out with the recording? Uh oh. Yes. Hold on. For those brushes. I okay. seem to have black ink. I don't know where it came from but it's smeared on my desk and I want to get it before it smears on me. Excuse me for taking this brief moment. You can't see what I'm, it must've been, you know, it's my pigment ink got everywhere. And I don't know how. Um, the, the name of the brush and a link to it um, on Amazon, because that's where I bought it is in the handout. Is that okay? And I think it was just Barbara that didn't get the handout or was there somebody else? I'll let you know if anybody responds. Okay. But I've also got the Alta new brushes and they're coming out with a new design of their brushes. And this is this is the Alta New brushes. I wasn't happy with it because it wouldn't hold, and I don't know what their new brushes. It wouldn't hold a a point. I wish you could see that. Um, hold on, let me get this. It wouldn't hold a sharp point like this one does. Can you see the difference there? It's like separates at the top. Um, but they are coming out with a new re redone ones. And I bet they're going to be fabulous because most everything that Alter New makes is fabulous. All right, moving on. It's kind of like that stamp wheel. So I'm going to do first I put the water down. And I got way too much, so I'm just going to dab some of it off and wipe it off my, on my old washcloth in this case. Could be paper towel, whatever. And then I'm going to add some. I'm going to do the same with that. So I'm going to start with a fresh lemon. Getting right up in there with my the tip and then using the belly of the brush to kind of bring it down. I'll get maybe this color to add more darkness in there. Using the belly of the brush as I kind of bring it down a little bit. I'm rinsing my brush and just bringing that down. Now, over here, this leaf petal goes over the top of that. So I want just a little bit of darkness there. I'm using the Autumn Blaze, and I'm going to put just a little bit there. And then I'm going to rinse my brush and then kind of blend it out. So it's just a little bit of shadow. I need some more here. Let's go. Eh, let's try orange cream here. 
a little bit more there. And I don't, personally, I don't want a harsh line. So that's why I rinse my brush and then I blend it out. And I move on around. Clean, clear water. Get the petal wet. And you will figure out, especially if you do a lot of practice or painting, and you'll figure out how much water you need, what's too much and what's not enough. I started with the fresh lemon and I did it just the tip of the brush because I want to use the belly of the brush to, to you know, bring that color down. I need a little bit more. I'm going to get some of the um, autumn blaze. It's the tip of the brush. Put that in there. Use the belly of the brush because the whole brush is wet to just bring that down. Now, this is the, uh, over here, this petal is underneath that. So I want to make sure I put more, make it darker over there. So, wet the leaf. I'm going to do the next leaf where I don't wet it first, the next petal. How to keep saying that, just to see what the difference is. Fresh lemon at the base. Rinse my brush, a little bit of almond bla blaze, almond, autumn blaze at the base. And I want to put some of that autumn blaze going up this way. Just a little tiny bit there. and smooth it out. I overlapped a little bit there and I got a little bit on this one. So I'm just going to take a clean brush and kind of just wipe that off. All right, this, this petal, just for, as somebody would say, kicks and giggles, I'm not going to wet it first. So I'm just going to get my clean brush. I'm going to get a little bit of the lemon yellow and I'm not wetting it first. I'm putting, so this is wet on dry and see if it makes a difference in this case. Huh, not really, I can just bring that up. Now, this leaf is below both of these two leaves. So I wanna make sure I get plenty of shadow in there. I need some more. Well, I probably have too much now. And notice that I can get a nice thin line with this brush that's got a nice sharp point. Lori, Annette says that she looked up your the paintbrushes online and they offer them in long and short handles. And she'd like to know why they do that and what do you prefer? I believe this is the long handled one. Let's see. Can I show you the whole thing? Yeah. I believe that's the long handled one. Um, I Part of it would be balance. So if this was shorter there would be a different balance in the way it feels in your hand. I don't know why one would want a shorter brush. Um, you know, what, how that would affect what you're drawing. 
it could very well be a personal preference. In other words, I don't have a good answer for you. But I believe this is the long handle brush. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine that this would be a short handle. I don't know because I bought some um, watercolor brushes from Amazon a few years ago. And they came, I didn't check the handles at all because I didn't know anything about it. And when they came, I still have them. They're nice brushes, but the handles are like 18 inches long. You know, I maybe not that long, a foot long. I mean, they're big brushes. So I, I don't know if there's a standard measurement or, or not. Maybe somebody who knows something about painting can say. Well, me, these, but let me just get my, my, the brushes I have here. And these brushes, I wouldn't say are particularly expensive. I bought them at art stores. Let me raise this up so you can see them. So there. This is the longest, but it's also the biggest brush. This is a, a flat brush. Can can you go online and see if you can find this and, and tell me the the so, the length of the handle of the of the brush and then I can measure this or I can measure this now and tell you. I can look it up for you while you keep going, but I need somebody to put the exact name of the brush in the chat because it's black velvet. Black velvet. Okay, I'll look it up and I'll put it in the chat. Let's see. So, oh, so, here, look, Sandy. It's silver, bl black velvet, and it's a size okay. six. Silver, black velvet. Okay, I'll be right back. And this, from tip of the brush to the end of the handle, is seven and uh, five eighths. Okay, I'll look it up right now. Thank you. Okay. Back to work. All right. So I've got, oh, I just put my, I just put my brush away. There's the brush I was using. All right. I'll use this one. Oh, there it is. There it is over there. All right. For what I want to do, because I want to get these, um, these shadows in there. I might need to make this darker at the tip, but before I do, I'm going to try, try not doing that. So if you're following along at this point, let's just watch and see how, how well it comes out. So by this point, they're dry. I've got my, my brush is wet and I'm going to take, um, well, I'm going to start with the warm sunshine. So it's not, it's not the lightest that I've been using. It's the next color. And I'm just getting it on the tip of my brush. And then I'm coming over to my little palette here. And now I got orange on me. God. Um, and wiping some of that off. Now I'm going to use this. Um, okay, let me get zoom in again so you can see. I'm going to use this um, petal that's got a couple little bumps there. So I've got it on the tip of my brush. And I want to go where the, 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 where the petal goes down. So I'm going to come and just come down like this. And I can see right now I probably want a darker color. So I'm going to come down this side and then I'm going to come down this side. And that really needs to be darker. So I'm going to move up to the sun kissed. See if that does anything. Like that and like that. And once I get that there, can you all see that? 
Let me just zoom in a little bit more. I'm taking my, I dried off my brush. I mean, I um, rinsed my brush and then dried it a little bit. And then I'm just going to go like this on the side of it, kind of blend it out. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So now it looks like there's a little wrinkle there. And I'm going to do it on this piece right here too. So I'm going to take, what did I say? I was taking the sun kissed just on the tip of my brush. And I'm coming down like that, rinsing my brush, and then kind of going down the edge of, of each side to blend it out. Let's do, let's do this piece right here. So that's the, that's the furthest indented. Just, I just get the very tip of my brush. Make sure I don't have too much on there. And then I go from this side and down. Oh. And my brush is not, <laughs> my brush is not wet enough. Okay. Do that again. Just this a little bit side and this side and yes my brush still isn't wet enough I, I, I dried it off too much or maybe I don't have enough paint on it that could be too like that okay and then clean the brush and bring it down like this on both sides. Not, I wish I was left-handed. I wish I was ambidextrous so I could do it with my other hand on this side. It's a little hard for me. And although it's not much of a dip, there's one right here. So let's do a little one there too. I messed that up, but I can fix it because I'm just going to go over it until it smooths out. Okay, I I tried to post a screenshot there in the chat, but it's really tiny. So I think if you click on it, you could probably read it. But basically what it says is that the long, what you're painting with is the short, um, the short handles. Okay. And what it says and so news to everybody and why I ended up with those big long handled ones that I didn't know what to do with a couple of years ago. It said that the long handled ones are meant for working on an easel and the short handled ones are meant for working on a desktop surface like what you are doing right now. So yeah. that's why they make them with the long handles is to work on easels on in a, you know, in, in a larger setting. Uh, yeah, and that makes sense now because you you're standing up and you're sitting back, you know, and you want it all exactly. It makes total sense when you when you hear that. But who knew, you know? So that's that's great news for everybody. Great information. Yes, it is. Thank you, Sandy. As I used to tell my students, because I taught for forty years, I don't know everything. And who does? So what do you guys think of those little darker lines and how it makes it the, the flower look a little more dynamic? Just eight paint. So I'm going to go from here. So just the tip of my Barbara brush. says she likes the darker lines in there. Yeah. And Cindy says that the lines make the flower come to life. And then mm -hmm. that it looks much more realistic and ruffled. Yeah. That's what I think. And kind of a an easy way to do it. I think I got this line a little too dark and I'm not having success lightening it. So what I'm going to do 
I'm going to take the um, fresh lemon, not that much, a little bit of fresh lemon and bring it up the flower a little bit. So I'm darkening the leaf and then I'll take a little bit of the, um, I keep saying that, the petal, I'm darkening the petal. A little bit of the orange cream. Oops, that was too much. And come up with that. So that that line doesn't look so stark against an almost white background there. And then I don't know what to do about this side because I don't see any dip. So I guess I'm just going to make up a dip. I'm going to pretend it's right about there and see what that looks like. So I want that. I want this. This one just a little bit. And I bet if you look at um, JC's, he's probably added a whole bunch more stuff in there. And then there's the dip here. So just a little bit of this autumn blaze. Like that. And that's what's so nice about, I, I keep saying this, about the fine tip brush is that I can make that very fine line that comes down there. And then I just kind of smooth it out on the edge, blend it a little bit. And I'll do one on the other side. Oh, add enough paint. Right here. And let's go right here. Lori Linda says that she has to she has to leave, but she wants to thank you for the class and the time and she's inspired and you made her day. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm sorry you have to leave, but that's okay. Um, no problem. And um, when the YouTube video is ready, you will all get a notification. Also, Barbara wants to know if we're going to leave some time at the end for everybody to be on camera and hold up their paintings that they've done. Barbara, you're reading my mind because I was just thinking I was just thinking, hmm, I wonder if anybody is willing to share. We have 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left? Well, there's not much more I can teach you, except you can keep adding. Like, I might want to add a little more shadow here. So I'll just take maybe um, the ocean cream here, just add a little bit more shadow and then blend that out. I am notorious for adding not enough shadow. It gets, I think, oh, that's too dark, that's too dark. And then I look at somebody else's, or if I do get it too dark, I'll go back and say, oh, that's, that's pretty good. So that's my downfall. I never get quite enough shadow in there. Um, well, I shouldn't say I, I do get enough. I get enough for what I do, but I could always add more and I think it would look better. I think that it's it's easy to not add enough because you forget that when it dries, it gets lighter. That's a, so yes. It looks dark enough when it's wet. And then when it dries, the final product looks lighter. So 
Yeah. Um, that's hard to gauge. It is hard to gauge. I'm just adding a little more shadow here and there. And then what I did for the centers of these, I think I used the grapevine for the center. So I'll put that in here. And I made it quite dark, so I want a lot of paint on my brush. But I only put it on the tip because that's such a small area to paint. There. Yeah. As far as um, sentiments are concerned, the sentiment that I had in the sample that you saw on Alta News site was not this. I did not like it, so I ripped it off, pulled a little bit of the paint off, but that didn't matter, and then just put that on. And this one came from, I believe it came from this. Let me see where it came from. Oh, maybe it's not. Thanks for everything that didn't come from this. I think I found just a strip and then I bent it around because the acrylic strips you can bend around to fit over this. And I and I think I already said the reason that this is down here at all is because I dropped my brush right there and I couldn't take off, you know, I couldn't fix it. So I just stamped this again cut out one a couple of these flowers you know on just a a, um, a, <clears throat> a scrap piece of uh, watercolor paper cut them out and just put them there but any sentiment strip you know this one I put on foam tape so I raised that up Is it okay that Melissa wants to know what colors did you use on the darker flower on the finished card of thanks for everything? What color did I use here in the center? Yeah, I think so. That would be grapevine. That's what I just did here was grapevine. On the whole flower. So what I did today is I used, I started with lemon fresh. I used orange cream. I used autumn blaze. And I think one time I used the, the crimson, but I, yeah, I, I think, I think she's wanting to know the orange colors that you used on that finished card. You were just holding up. Oh, this one. Uh huh. The one in the middle there, because those are orange. Orangier, I guess. Is that a word? They're 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 <laughs> they're rosier. It was probably coral bells, rubellite, but I honestly can't remember. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking it's probably some combination of these here: coral bell, rubellite. That's the grapevine I put in the center in crimson, because this looks like the the pinker part that's there. Maybe well, Melissa pink. says she thinks that combination is really pretty. And it is. It's it really is. nice. And notice that I only did this one. But you could do all of them. I mean, the details. on just that one. Let me try something real quick before we, we quit this here. So I turn... Let's see if I can find what color that was. So I just turned the paper over here and let me try the, um, this is the coral berry. Yeah, I bet it was the coral berry that I added to that. And I probably used, um, Maybe a little bit of the orange cream. Let's see what happens if I add that to that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think that's a good match to this? So that's the coral berry and the ocean cream 
probably what I used for that. All right. What questions can I answer and who wants to? I'm going to stop this. Uh, Lori, I think that it's probably fine for people to unmute themselves when they have a question to, yeah. to ask. But don't, don't keep your mics on if you are not actually asking a question because it picks up all this background noise on the video, but if you have something to ask, you can unmute and then ask it. Angela looks like she's ready to ask something. Are you Angela? Okay. But who wants to show? Who, who wants to do show and tell? Angela, you're muted, we can't. Okay, so let's start with Barbara because I just saw her pop up there. Um, can you spotlight her? Spotlight here. Does that do it? There we go. Very nice. I like that. And Barbara, unmute yourself so we can hear you if you want to say something. Hi, Barbara. Now I can see your face. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I didn't get your stamps, but I used the Ulta Those New Those stamps are just had. fine. Oh, I love that. You've, you've got the shading in there very nicely. Trying. That's beautiful. My brush is terrible. This is my brush. Oh, dear. It's well, from Dollar Tree. From Dollar Tree. Okay. You might want to get <laughs> I have these. I got the Ulta new things, but um, yeah. they, put too much, they put too much down for this little flower. Yeah. I have not used, and I think I said that in my handout, I have not used their watercolor brushes or any company's watercolor brushes. I have, I have this kind of brush where you put water in it. Oh, wait yeah. Okay, I was using yeah. that to wet it. Right, but um, I I don't even like using that. All right, who else wants Next to share? To town. Melissa, let's let's spotlight you. Oh, lovely! Now look at look at how much richer her. Hers is. She made it much darker than mine. I like that. I'm heavy handed. That's the only thing. I tried to do it lighter, but then I decided I'll just go with the dark because it was laying down dark. Yeah. Now when they I look like violets, they're pretty. Yeah, they Thank are. You. Yeah. Um, when I'm getting ink on my brush, let me on. Um, can you shoot? <laughs> can you can you unspotlight her for me? Because I'm not. Oh, there we go. Um, when I, I'm just getting the ink, the ink, I keep saying that the paint on uh -huh. the very tip. Yep. Just a little bit on the tip and, and then dropping it on there, huh? Yeah. And yep. look at the difference. I, I'm not heavy handed enough. <laughs> so something, but I can always add more to this too. So. I did my other one like that, but I don't like my lines. They came out like lines on it. It's, um, oh, see what so I mean? It's, it's really funky. So I need to practice that technique. I did well, it a little lighter on this one, but. I don't. So your lines, you want to be kind of a, um, kind of an elongated V shape. Here, let me, yeah. let me show you what I mean. I'm drawing this on a piece of paper, kind of an elongated V shape. Okay. So that you that you have kind of a V at the, and this is exaggerated, but a V at the top that comes uh -huh. down. Got and that's it. why you want the nice um, pointy. The pointy tip. Maybe I should go down to a two brush or something when I do the lines because I'm using a four. Maybe it's too thick. Yeah. Well, this is a six, but it's got such a nice point. That's it why it does I have like a good this. point. Yeah. I'm using a sable brush and I think it's too, uh, it spreads out a little bit too much. Mm, okay. Who else wants to share? Love to see. Uh, Susie, let me get you. Nice. Nice. I You've took the a, dark one of the Ulta new um, stamps that uh -huh. I really liked. And I did this one using your advice on the techniques for the highlighting and getting the dark underneath where the shadows is. And I, I love how it turned out. It, it's, it's really it's, fun. Yeah, and it's I, wonderful. And I, 
And I did this one too. Same thing. Oh, that's great. That's yeah, lovely. A little bit simpler. But it yeah. was so much fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Time. <laughs> All right. All right. Wait a minute. Somebody else. Had, there's up. All right. I have a so, question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, on the, the second card with the little black spots, how did you do that? Oh, the splatters. <coughs> The splatters. Did you actually splatter the paint? Yeah, I just took a, I just took black paint, and I had to because I I had a drop here that I couldn't get rid of. Oh, I see. I had problems with this card. <laughs> Drop the brush here. Had it splattered there. I said, okay, we'll just splatter it all. Okay. So, oh look, now I've got ink. Somehow I got, I got the ink on my face. I don't think I got it on my clothes. All right, wait a minute. Sue, you're going to show us what you got? I love the colors you used on your card. Now, what color did you use for the center? Uh, well, thank you. Well, it's kind of, I have these tubes. Tubes are fine. I have these tubes of watercolor paint, and mm -hmm. the one I used was called um, Violet. Okay, but, and that's what it looks like. It looks like a yellow flower with um, purple in the middle. Yeah. And I love that's that. Really Thank you. Thank you. This has been fun. So picked up so much from today's Great. lesson. Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I don't want to do that, Council. Uh, Joanne. All right. Yeah, let me, let me spotlight you. All right. Unmute yourself. Okay. All right. Um, I, my uh, embossing didn't come out right. So I didn't have the lines to follow through. So I kind of winged it. Yeah, that's fine. Point. Yeah. And what I did, this was, I am. I know what it, that is. Yes. But I painted on the, in, the imprint, not the. Not Ray's side. This is the, the debossed side. It's the debossed side. That's side. beautiful. Nice. That's really pretty, Joanne. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, but I like I like the um, the colors in this, and, and this was you know, like I said, my my embossing powder might be old or whatever, but it just did not. I didn't get the raised effect, and so you don't I just have kind of to. stayed within the line. Yeah. And you did yeah, a great job staying the line in the line. As best as I could. Good. Nice. Yeah. So, like I said, I was always got very frustrated with um, with water painting because I just couldn't get, get it right. But this was really, this really encouraged me. Good. Good. I'm so, glad to hear that. All right. Who else, who else wants to share? Brenda. Okay. Nice. This was this is my first attempt at any kind of watercolor. Period. <laughs> well, oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. So, and then this wow. one, I learned how to. I started out with the colors real dark, and then I finally figured out how to make them lighter and lighter. So I'm going to go back and make the other flowers lighter and just have like the focal, the dark ones, and then lighten up around the outside. Sure. The more water you add, the lighter it is. Okay. That's why even though my, my, here's my supposed clean, clear water. If I were to mm -hmm. paint this on a piece of clean, clear paper, not clear paper, but white paper, I would uh -huh. see um, that it was a little bit pink. Okay. So, the more but this has been the lighter. this has been a great class for me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, I'm so glad. I wanted it to be fun and show you that it's not it's not that hard to to make it look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And all your cards look beautiful. Joanne, do you? I don't know if you know, but you have your hand raised. Do you have another question? Oh no, I thought I was just saying hello earlier. <laughs> oh well, hello. Hello. <laughs> I'll just lower the hand then. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies, thank you so much. 